Hi there. This video goes over the STEM Audio ecosystem platform. Let's dive in and see what the different features and different buttons do on this platform. So let's dive into the homepage. Over here you see the six main buttons that take us to different paths within the platform. So let's start with the ecosystem button. We're gonna get three different options. So let's go ahead and start with the room design wizard. When you enter that screen, you'll see a list of all the rooms you might have designed already and saved as a template. If you wanna do a new room, go ahead and click that button below that says add room. When you punch add room, it's gonna bring you into the screen and now you can actually design your room. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna build out your walls. Then you're gonna be able to add the different types of furniture. Note that you can change the shapes and sizes of these tables or chairs. And then finally, now you're ready to drop in devices to see what the coverage is so you can figure out which devices you wanna actually place in that room. Make sure you click on that top right button that says show pickup. When you do that, it's actually gonna give you an estimate of the pickup of the different products. You'll see that it's gonna ask you if you actually wanna save this template. So let's go ahead and click yes and give the room a name and then we have it saved as you can see in this window. So now we're back to the ecosystem screen and let's dive into devices. Is once you click on it, you see all the different devices in the organization. All the way in the top, I see a summary of how many devices I have. And then I see the different images of different types. So you can see a table, a controller, a wall, a hub. Each one of these icons represents an actual product in your organization. You're gonna have the type in the image, you're gonna have the name that you gave it, and also notice that you can see the MAC address and the IP address of the product. Don't forget that you can scroll either left and right by just sliding your fingers across that screen. Every device that has a solid color on its left means that it's actually assigned into a room. So if it's a solid green stripe, it means the device is functional and operating as we expect, and it's also assigned into a current room. If it's a solid red stripe, then that device is assigned to an existing room, but there's an issue with the device that you have to address. Also notice that we have some of these icons that are kind of half color and half gray. So it's either gonna be half green, half gray, or half red, half gray. All that means is that those devices are not assigned to a room. They're kind of free agents. These are products that you plugged into your network, but you have not told them yet which room they belong to. So let's click on back. Very similar to devices, rooms just shows us all of the rooms in our organization, the icons and the summary and the way the screen is laid out is exactly the same. All the way in the top, we have a summary of how many rooms we have and then each icon now, instead of representing a device, it represents a room in my organization. I have the name, I have how many devices are in that room and then below the name, you'll see the last time the room was tested. The color scheme is the same. If it's green, it means everything is well in that room. If it's red, it means we have some issues. When you're creating new rooms, you can always use that button all the way at the bottom, add room, and that'll build a new room, which you'll be able to drop devices into. You can also delete rooms through this screen. So let's jump into a room. Inside of a room, we see we have a lot of options. On the top, we see the name. Below that, we see a list of all the devices that were dropped or belong into this room. We can add devices by clicking the add device button. We can remove devices by clicking the remove device button. And then below, we have another group of cool features. You can ping the room. When you click on that button, all the devices are basically gonna make a ping sound and blink so that you can make sure that you're in the correct room. You can test the room. You can do room adapt, which will basically make all the devices in the room. They will make sure that they operate perfectly for that particular room. And then in advance, you have a bunch of other features that we will cover a little bit later. Before we exit this screen, let's just talk about what we see all the way on the bottom right. And that is the blueprint of your room. You don't have to put anything there. But if you want to, you can go ahead and click Edit Layout. You can draw out your room, or if you recall from earlier, if we already save this as a template, click this button just to the left of Edit Layout. It's gonna allow me to upload an existing template, and that way I don't have to draw it again. So that's it for rooms. Let's go back to our main screen. Now that we're back in the main screen, let's talk real quick about the Quick Start button. Now, you don't need to use this button. All it's gonna do, it's gonna walk you through the process of installing a room, plugging in devices, giving everything names, and getting your first room started. You can always just do this manually by jumping into ecosystem, rooms, add room, and doing whatever you want. But maybe if it's the first time that you're doing a room, you can go ahead and try that out and you see it's just an easier process. So that's quick start. Afterwards, we see two buttons labeled dialer and video conferencing. These buttons are to be used once you're done with setting up your room organization, and you're not gonna leave this controller in the room as the controller for the room. 
If it's going to be a room mostly used for SIP, then go ahead and place it on the dialer screen. And then all the user sees is basically a SIP dialer. Uh, you can go ahead and click on that bottom left lock button and it'll ask you for your password. Once you punch in that password, the user will not be able to leave the screen and change things on your organizational level. They will, however, be able to toggle to the video conference button, which you see right above the dialer button. So let's just jump back and talk about that. The video conferencing button that you see now here on the main screen, when I click on it, I get an assortment of different video conferencing platforms that I can choose depending on what I use my organization. Once I click on it, it's basically going to run that on top of my application. And you'll see that the STEM Audio logo is going to pop up. This will allow the user to always go back to the STEM Audio ecosystem from the video conferencing. And please note that you can actually slide this button around in case it's in the way of one of the controllers that you want to use. So go back to the main screen. And then we'll talk about one final button, and that is stats. So stats allows you to get statistics on your organization. You have usage, which will give you an idea of how much uh, video conferencing is being done via PC versus via SIP or telephony. We have uptime. The idea behind this is to allow you to get a better idea of if you have problematic rooms, maybe the infrastructure, or maybe problematic devices that tend to have lower uptimes than other devices. Event logs basically logs every single thing that happened in your organization, whether it's tests or failures or units dropping out or unplugging. And then finally, call logs. In case you're doing SIP calls, you basically see all the different dialed, received, and missed calls over here. So that is the stats button. And then the last button that we're actually not going to talk about in this video is the settings button, or as we call it, advanced settings. And that is going to be for a separate video. So that's it. We covered everything that you need to know about the STEM Audio ecosystem platform. If you understood everything we talked about, you're ready to go. You're ready to use the platform and the different devices. The only thing we didn't really dive into are the advanced settings, which we'll do in a separate video. But by this point, you should be good to go. So thank you for watching.